Good morning, Flagler County. I'm Rich Carroll. You're listening to Flagler's Morning News on Friday, June 16th. It's categorically false. That's Flagler Beach City Commissioner Eric Cooley responding to the county and cities that may have assumed that a letter from the city asking for a meeting and cooperation equated to asking for money. Cooley sets the record straight. In the past, we have asked for support for tourism costs and things that are not associated with the city. We've done that before, and I think it's just an assumption on their part because they have no clue what we're asking for because they didn't take the time to either engage me or read the letter. Cooley says cities and the county haven't met in many years. We need to sit down and have discussions on strategic-minded things. Like the discussion, the subject material we're going to be covering is things that are not even of this year. So clearly we're not asking for money because our subject material is not even about the year that we're in. This is a forward-looking, strategic-style discussion. Forward-thinking, two to five years. And what brought this up is the gigantic boom that we have going on right now with approvals of residences and apartments and just additional people that are going to be coming to the county in the next couple of years. Commissioner Cooley says most of those people are moving here to enjoy the coastline. They want to come to the beach. It's in all the marketing. It's actually in all their PUDs and subdivision names. Everything has to do with the coastline or the beach. And so in the next couple of years, we're going to see a, a big, gigantic spurt of fifteen to 20,000 people on top of each year, you know, ever since COVID, our county has grown by leaps and bounds. And all of those people are going to want to come to the beach. To hear the full interview with Flagler Beach City Commissioner Eric Cooley, tune in to the Business Report tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. right here on WNZF. This local news is a service of Flagler County's Toyota dealer, Beaver Toyota US1 St. Augustine, here to wow you. An off-site medical savings program for inmates yields significant results. Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley says the program was developed in March of 2022. The Sheriff's Office spearheaded a partnership between Flagler County, Florida County Commissioners, the Sheriff's Office, the Florida Sheriff's Association's prime correctional to save taxpayers money through inmate medical care on inmate costs when inmates have to be transported to the hospital or outside medical providers. The savings is already very significant. This partnership in only seven months this fiscal year has already saved the taxpayers $719,906. This is an outstanding partnership that is allowing the Sheriff's Office to comply with federal and state laws for medical care for inmates but at a significant reduction in cost for the taxpayer. Before the program was implemented, the sheriff's office paid a flat percentage of bill charges, but those bills were never reviewed or edited. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Rich Petschke. The Palm Coast Budget Procurement Office receives an excellence award. The City of Palm Coast Financial Services Department's Budget Procurement Office was awarded the Excellence in Public Procurement Award by the Florida Association of Budget Procurement Officials. Shannon Nolan is Procurement Coordinator for the City of Palm Coast. The Budget and Procurement team is grateful to be receiving the FAPU Award for the fifth year in a row. The award recognizes agencies that meet industry benchmarks and best practices in public procurement. Our team is honored to be one in 24 agencies in Florida to qualify this year. The Excellence in Public Procurement Award recognizes Florida agencies that meet or exceed benchmarks in public procurement. For Flagler's Morning News, I'm Karen Johnson. She followed in her husband's footsteps. After Teresa Rizzo's husband Joe died last year, she took over as the executive director of the Flagler Education Foundation. She said on a recent episode of Business Minds Coffee Chat that she's made a discovery about herself because of Joe. But what I have discovered, and my late husband Joe Rizzo actually brought me to be aware of this, is all of those different steps and all of those different struggles and hurdles that you accomplish is what has given you the lens and the perspective to be successful at what you are doing now. Teresa Rizzo said that her enlightenment came when she realized that, as the Flagler Education Foundation's executive director, she had done several things in life that she said led her to where she is now. Listen to Business Minds Coffee Chat on WNZF Saturday mornings at 830 or on the Flagler radio app. From the WNZF Newsroom, I'm Deb Albertson. 
The weekend is here and there's plenty of family fun to be had in Flagler County. This is Stacy with Fun for Augie Kids. Tomorrow, the Flagler County Library is hosting a block party where children can come play with Legos and let their imaginations go wild. The Flagler Auditorium is presenting Rat Pack Universe and Marilyn Monroe Tribute. This is an amazing collection of unforgettable talent reminiscent of the Las Vegas musical, comedic and interactive antics of Frank, Dean, and Sammy Davis Jr. Featuring Marilyn Monroe and a six-piece swing band, you're guaranteed to find lots of surprises, fun, and laughs. For more on these events and others, please visit us on our website at fun, the number four, augiekids.com. Have a great weekend. And now you're up to date on Flagler's Morning News. I'm Rich Carroll. And now, Mike Lee Show with your WNZF local sports update. Tuesday night, Flagler Palm Coast High School held their cross-country and track and field awards. Three athletes signed their commitment letters. Brandon Kolasnik heads for the mountains. You're in Seattle because it's a beautiful, beautiful area in North Carolina. I, I love the area. I really love the coaches and the team that I'll have around me. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity for me, also for what I'm going to be studying, health and wellness. Isaiah Joseph is off to Florida a and I want to go into chemical engineering, and they just have a really good chemical engineering program. And then they also allowed me to run track there, so I thought it was a win-win deal. Zachary Spooner is also Tallahassee bound. He'll be running at Florida State. I am a Palaka boy myself, so I love Central Florida. I love that culture, and I love running, and they have one of the best running programs in the country, so it was no-brainer. My father's a pilot, and I'm getting my private pilot's license right now. The Denver Nuggets capture their first NBA title, defeating Miami 94-89 in Game 5 Monday night in Denver. The 47-year wait is over! The Denver Nuggets stand on top of the NBA world. Jason Kosmicki, KKSE Radio. The Florida Panthers barely made the playoffs as an eighth seed after a late season collapse by Pittsburgh. On Tuesday, their historic playoff run came to an end as they were defeated by the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup Final in five games, falling 9-3. to three. Panthers coach Paul Maurice says the result is not what he'll remember about his team. Remember the feeling. It's not the moments necessarily and actually the goals. As a matter of fact, I don't think that's what it is at all with these guys it was they just care about each other they just loved each other it's truly a special year baseball the tampa bay rays are in the split with the oakland a's winning four to three thanks to a luke Rayley home run they start a three-game series in san diego tonight the daytona tortugas take on the jupiter hammerheads tonight at home the florida gators begin their quest for a second college world series title tonight against virginia at seven i have an interview with new fpc athletic director scott drapsick on the rich and mike sports show tomorrow at 7 30 a.m right here on WNZF. We are your home for local sports with updates Mondays and Fridays. From the Sports Desk, I'm Mike Lucio.